mermaid. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all, this is a dream come true for me. No. Because I am sitting next to mermaid Hannah, Yay. Hannah Frazier. Hello. OMG. Oh, wow. Thanks, Abby. It is so nice to meet you. Likewise. Girl, you got all the sparkles going on. I love I that. When in doubt, more glitter. Uh, that is the life <laughs> Bio, motto. Biodegradable glitter. Correct. Yeah. Biodegradable, <laughs> yes. So we're here at Mermaid Mega Fest in South Haven, Michigan. It's uh, more mermaids than I've ever seen, personally, at it's one time. It's very impressive. <laughs> As a mermaid, I mean, you are one of the OG mermaids. Like, Thank I mean, you. 2003. It's, whoa. Those 16 years have just flown by. Swam by. Swam by. Yeah. Just swam on by. <laughs> well, you, I mean, back in those days, I mean, there, there were not tales... No, I remember buy. going online and thinking, you know, someone's got to be able to tell me how to make a tail or someone must sell one. Uh -huh. Nothing. Absolutely no. nothing. There was no. not any other professional mermaids in the world other than site-specific, wiki-watchy, mm -hmm. right. and then the mermaids that had been, you know, hired for film specifically, yeah. and they were usually actresses that did a thing, and then they right. left, and mm -hmm. it wasn't their lifestyle. Right. And so I sent out letters to all of the special effects agencies and the filmmakers and, you know, like, cast my net wide. Yeah. Oh, yes. And did not get many re responses. But I okay. tell you who did write back to me, which I will always be thankful f to this day. It wasn't very helpful, but it was very nice. <laughs> was Robert Short, oh. who made the splash tail, yes. which was the inspiration for me when I was nine years old and made well, my first tail. Yes. <laughs> and he took the time, he wrote back, and oh he said, Oh my gosh! You know, I was part of the special effects team that made yeah. that tail, and it... Um, it was not very functional. We made about eight of them. She had to be locked into that thing. We latexed wow. it closed. She couldn't pee for eight hours a day. They what? kept breaking. We oh super glued it to her body. Okay. And I was like, well, and we had a team and you know, each one cost like $10,000. Of course. And I was like, well, that was great, but not helpful. That's not gonna help, no. guys. <laughs> Thanks though, appreciate you. <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, I'll just make my own tail. I'll figure it out. My first one was terrible. It was very Aussie. So I had, <laughs> A pair of flippers, a plastic boomerang, some uh, coat hangers to kind of like make the shape wider, and then a lot of duct tape to yes. tape the crazy contraption together. When in doubt, duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put a lot of glitter on it. Yes, of course. <laughs> wow. It didn't function very well, but it gave me enough of a feeling that I was like, wow, yeah. I get it. I can yeah. do this. And then I got yeah. real technical. I was like polyethylene board, bolting flippers onto it, sanding it down, yes. you know, silicon on top. And um, it just went from there. And 16 wow. years later, I have 14 tails. Wow. Each one takes six months of hard labor and Girl. pricked fingers to create. And um, is each one a unique work of art. Wow. And I've never sold a tail because they just take too, too much, much time and money yeah. to make for me. So yeah. it's really just like an art form. You are one of the most impressive to me as far as underwater photography and just, you know, movement underwater. I mean, you are like so oh, thank you. great at it. Well, I, if I hadn't been doing what I did as like a visual artist, model, yeah. mermaid, I, I feel like I missed my other calling as a dancer. That's what I was gonna ask. Do you yeah. have any like ballet experience? No, I was not trained. I was always kind of, I was lo loved dancing, yeah. but I was never really trained. I did yeah. a little ballroom dance yeah. in my teenage years. Yeah. You know, I took a few hip hop classes. I have belly dancer friends that show me how to shimmy. Yes. But no, I was not trained, but I love it. It is yeah. my happy place. Yeah. And you know, I used to have dreams when I was a kid and up until now where I'm weightless and I'm flying yes. and I'm dancing and yeah. it's like the most blissful state yeah. and I wake up just going why can't I do that right. <laughs> and so what it is when I'm underwater and I'm dancing like that I'm recreating my dream space yeah wow yeah. so you can hold your breath for how long underwater? I'm not amazing. I can do like two minutes of activity, three minutes if I breathe up and hold really well. Um, I mean, you know, and that, if I'm pretty impressive. It, it, there's free divers that are like <laughs> yeah, six for sure. minutes. They're legit. And I'm like, wow, yeah, how do you do that? Yeah. Um, 
But for me, it's what I do with those minutes that yeah, counts. Yeah, for sure. You know, and when you're freezing cold, bolted to the bottom of the ocean with 50 pounds of weight, being Correct. pushed onto harsh rocks and trying to look pretty and hold your breath at the same time, right. that's where my skill comes in. Correct. So you have <laughs> With a shark. A, right, that's what I was going to say. You, you got some obstacles and all that stuff. And so you swim, I mean, I've seen like with the giant whales and with the mm. tiger sharks and stuff. And like, A, I want to know, you know, what that is like. Um, swimming with creatures of the wild but b like what is the energy like between you and the animals mm. like what is that like especially with the tiger sharks because i'm like people have such a like skewed view of sharks in general mm. and so like what is the energy between especially like in that video you made which she had a professional team with her yes. and please do not go don't go swim. and pet tiger sharks just by yourself just don't do it um <laughs> but you, you did, and what was the energy like down there? So I trained and learned everything I could about tiger sharks before that, and I had found that you know there's different places in the world where it's more safe to interact with animals. They're yeah. more used to divers. Right. They're you know amply fed. They're not desperate yeah. for food. We haven't eaten all their fish stock yet. Right. <laughs> so the Bahamas um, and Tiger Beach is one of these amazing places where these animals have had human interaction nearly every day, and they come. They're interested. Um, and the people there are really used to understanding what mood they're in. So these sharks, um, the, the divers down there know them all by name and they can you know, tell you, oh, that one is a oh larger female and even yeah. though she looks more scary, she's got nothing to prove, she's older, she's wiser, she's yeah. chill. Um, it's those little ones you gotta be scared of because uh -huh. they're male and they're like twitchy moving. Ooh. So there was okay. a lot of knowledge that yeah. I learned that yeah. I wouldn't have um, understood how to interact with them safely had yeah. I not had that. But wow, I, I never expected to be so interactive with sharks. You know, I was like, I'm gonna go and hug a dolphin. Yeah. I'm gonna like <laughs> have an emotional, spiritual re you know, experience with a whale. And right. Those happened, but the sharks were the only animal that offered themselves for physical contact. Wow. They came up, they brushed past, they would allow me to trail my fingers under their bodies as they went past. I tickled them on the nose. It was <laughs> so wild to feel that massive strength. I could yeah. feel the musculature yeah. of they wow. as they went past. Yeah. And they were like big dogs. They're kind of like yeah. they sniffed along the bottom of the ocean and then they kind of look up at you with these big eyes yes. and just kind of like and then you give them a little scratch on the nose and they're like cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you are, you have to be super fit. Like you have to be in like tip top shape to be doing what you're doing. I mean, I mean I'm no gym junkie. That's for sure. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, you ha probably eat a certain way and do some sort of exercise to stay yeah. this way. What, Yoga what is absolutely essential okay. because one, it works with the breath. Yes. And so you're deep, deep breathing yes. into the parts of your body and expanding your lungs in ways that you wouldn't otherwise. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. And then the dancing is really important because of just you know yeah. jumping cardio. around phys cardio yeah. physical activity and and movement you have to keep your spine supple to be able to even begin to move as a mermaid and the other thing that is super important is meditation and that yeah. people don't really expect because yeah. they're like i just want to like swim and do all yeah. this activity yeah. but if you're in dangerous situations which right. whether you're in a pool in the ocean or an aquarium there's still a risk factor there's there a risk sure. factor and you need to be able to deal with those situations with yeah. a really calm mind and yeah. not panic and so for me the meditation is really awesome for that wow. Um, and yes, I've been vegetarian since birth um, wow. for health and for uh, ethical reasons. Obviously, I love animals so yes. much that I can't eat them. Yes. And I highly disagree with the, the way that animals are farmed these days. Definitely. If you're going to do it, do it ethically. Yep. Um, and yeah, I'm actually vegan and I'm on an extremely restricted diet for health now. So like yeah. no sugar, no dairy, no yeah, wheat, girl. no, you know, blah, blah. I'm but on yeah, that meal so, plan myself. So. Yeah. So it, it definitely keeps me healthy, keeps me yeah. young. And yeah. so I'm grateful for the limitations that my body has placed upon me. As far as the business side of being a mermaid, a lot of people don't like think about this. They don't think about branding. They don't think about social media or like, you know, the, the things that are now 
now necessary mm. for a successful brand or business or whatever. So like from your perspective, and I know you kind of, you got into it like pre-social media stages. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, for the rest of us, here we are. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, what what have you found to be successful for your brand and your business? You just in general. Yeah. Like authenticity. Mm. Why are you doing this? And yeah. this is what you'll ask from any business person, anything that you do. Yeah. You have to have something that truly comes from your heart. That's an authentic offering. Otherwise, other people aren't going to buy it either. Right. Um, If you're just here to make some money and to like be famous, that is a very shallow platform. Yes. So find what wakes you up in the morning. What is it that lights you up? What do you want to talk about to people? What information do you want to impart? Yes. So that to me is the number one thing. And then you have to, everything is a trickle down effect from there. What um, visuals portray that? What messages, what's your vision? So craft your brand from the perspective of what is it you're truly trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Don't sell out to the latest fad or the craze or what you see other people doing. And that's another really important thing. Like be original. For real. And I know it's a little more difficult now. When I started, I was original just because I had a tail. Yeah. And now you've got to contend with thousands of people around the planet, but that doesn't mean the ideas have exhausted. I'm still seeing people come up with super unique, unusual offerings and doing their own thing. And that's, to me, that's exciting. Yeah. Like push the boundaries. Don't just copy somebody else. That's already been done. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. And you said something yesterday. Um, You said you were talking about the definition of a mermaid. Um, mm-hmm. And being mer being of the ocean, and, correct? Yes, and, then and maid, maid being, being servant. servant. So, yeah, for me, everyone's like, well, what is a mermaid? And it's not just a pretty girl that sits around in a tail, right? Or you know, this siren that eats men's hearts, yeah. Or or these other kind of visuals. To me, it is literally being a servant of the sea. And so for me, my whole brand has come from the passion of being of service to the ocean and to the planet. Well, it's it's really interesting because we are the first generation that has grown up with the threat of entire world annihilation. Yeah. Um, You know, other generations had to deal with horrific wars and so forth, but they were never told we could annihilate life on the planet entirely. We, We grew up with that message. Right. So... We're contending with these dire prophecies while still trying to be completely optimistic and bring beauty and love to the planet. And so I think it's called for even more. And I was saying yesterday, you know, creativity, radical creativity is called for more than ever before because it is the place of solution and innovation. So through our enjoyment, through our love, through our passion, we can create change that will you know, change the course of this this dire prophecy that we're living with. I just really appreciate you for sending that message in a in a really beautiful way. I think Thank you're you. such an inspiration to Thank me you. and to all the mermaids here. For well, sure. it's so inspiring to see everybody take that on and to stand up, be literally the bridge between land and sea. Yeah, and to be the spokesperson of this gorgeous planet that we inhabit right you know we watch all these cool sci-fi films right. and you know avatar pandora and yeah. we're like i wish i lived there guess what you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah this planet is magnificent yeah. if we look after it yeah for sure well thank you so much thank you. mermaid hannah oh, mm, this has been such pleasure. yes thank you so much for joining me today yeah and, and now if- we're gonna go and get wild with like <laughs> 500 to 1,000 people dressed you know, as mermaids. Just just the Guinness Book World Record or <laughs> something like that. Well, if you want to follow Mermaid Hannah, you can follow her on Instagram at Mermaid Hannah, correct? Mm-hmm. Facebook. Mer- Hannah, Mer- it's Hannah Mermaid. Oh, Hannah Mermaid. Sorry, sorry. Hannah Mermaid, yes. And then YouTube. You've got YouTube. a YouTube channel. Yep, Hannah Mermaid. Hannah Mermaid. HannahMermaid.com. I'm really easy to find. All the Hannah Mermaids. <laughs> you just search Hannah Mermaid and you will find her. But thank you so much for joining thank me. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next time.